Hello, everybody. Uh, as Mike said, my name is Jerry. Well, actually, my name is Gergana, but I go by Jerry because that's a little bit easier to pronounce. And today I'm going to talk to you about automating your life with Azure. Well, not really your life, not your whole life, a very, very small part of your life. But um, before I get to that, I need to tell you a little bit about my team because this whole talk revolves around my team and what I did for us. So if this thing was on, this is my team. A lot, of, uh, a lot of you may know a lot of these people because we speak a lot in community. And um, we are the research and development team here at BBD. And it's not really well defined what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, but it ranges from boring things like training and consulting to exciting things like Twitter walls and astromech droids. But so the team consists of me, already introduced myself. Then there's Rory. Uh, Rory's not a horse, he's a dwarf. Um, but he thinks it's funny that he has a dwarf pony as his picture on Twitter. Then there's Tony. Tony doesn't speak that much in community yet. We're getting there though. And then there's Mike person who introduced me to those of you who don't know him, our local JavaScript expert. So this research started because we do a lot of menial tasks, and we sometimes forget to do those tasks. And we forget because they're not really important to us, but they are important for our day-to-day -day work. So we started with automating a lot of those tasks on Trello. And we use something called Butler on Trello for automating those tasks. And it's really good. It works really well. It reminds us when we're missing out on those tasks that we forget to do. But I wanted to take this further. I wanted to make it so that when we have our stand up, it's a lot easier for us to do. So when someone stands in front of the computer when we're doing stand up, the Trello board should be able to filter who those, that person's tasks are. So that was what I wanted to do. Now, a lot of you probably know this, but in order to do facial recognition, you need neural networks. I think you need like one or two or maybe three. I'm not entirely sure how many. You need a bunch of neural networks. Okay, but neural networks look like that. Now, I, I wrote a neural network once when I was in university and it went well. Well, I thought it went well. It was written in Java, which makes it even more amazing to me. <laughs> but now, I was, I was speaking to a PhD student who's doing machine learning. I was telling him this whole thing about how I wrote a neural network once. And he said to me, but was that before 2012? And I said, oh, yes, it was before 2012. And he said, oh, then it doesn't count. So I'm not really sure what exactly happened to neural networks in 2012, but apparently something big happened. So now, I'm standing here telling you that I don't know much about neural networks or machine learning, but that we require this in order to do facial recognition. So how are we going to do it? Well, with the cloud, the Microsoft one to be exact. OK. So Azure's Cognitive services provide a bunch of different services that allow you to do these things easier. So a bunch of really clever people have created these, thing, these neural networks for us, and we just get to use them. So the computer vision API is what we're going to be using. It's a RESTful API, and you can call it from pretty much any language. It has a few helper libraries when you're doing it in C Sharp, because it's Azure. But any other language that can call a REST service can do it. And when I started doing these tutorials to figure out how the computer vision API works, I decided on my first try to run it on a photo of myself to see how it works. And it identified my face as human, which is great already. <laughs> We're getting somewhere. It said I was female. It said I, there's 100% chance that I'm smiling in that photo. It said I'm not wearing glasses, and it said that I'm 27 years old. 
Now, this last part really amazed me because in that photo, I am 27 years old. Now, this was amazing. I thought Azure Computer Vision was the best thing ever because even a human looking at another person can't tell exactly how old they are, right? So I thought I should try this again. So I got a photo of my team because after all, this was for my team. And this is where things started getting a little bit weird. So firstly, it only identified me and Rory as human. <laughs> but I have learned to not ask questions I don't want answers to. Then the gender and glasses and smiling thing, it got pretty much right, right? That was fine. Then it said that Rory was 50. <laughs> now, for those of you that know Rory, you know he's not 50. And with most people, when you tell them they're older than they actually are, they kind of get offended. So I said to him, hey, Rory, is it okay if I share this with people? Like, I'm gonna do this to a talk, with, in a talk to lots of people. Is it okay if I tell them that Azure said you were 50? He said, it's not a problem. And now, this is a quote, so please don't judge me on it. But apparently, computers, like small children and dogs, do not understand dwarfism. Okay, but then the part that really worried me was that it said that I was 37. Now, this photo was taken in December last year, and I decided that this could only be for one of three reasons. A, Azure Computer Vision isn't as good as I really thought it was. I really didn't want to believe this, but it's a possibility, or B, Two years of marriage had aged me by 10 years. <laughs> or C, three months of being on this team had aged me by eight years. Either way, I thought this was, this was great. It was working. It was doing what I needed it to do. So I moved on. And I started hacking away. Now, there are two parts to facial recognition. Firstly, identifying where the face in the photo is, and then saying whether that face is that person. But in order to be able to give and sign a name to a face, you need to train it with pictures of that face. Now for me, I'm a millennial. I have tons of photos of myself. However, the rest of my team all have kids. Now, who knows what photos people with kids have? Anyone? Photos of their kids, exactly, yes. Not photos of themselves, photos of their kids. Which meant that getting between three to 10 photos of my team members was not very easy. It did involve a bunch of trips to our marketing team to ask them if they had photos from previous BBD events that I could use. Or um, there was a bunch of times when I would be like, hey Mike, look up, I need a photo of you. And then there was a little bit of social media stalking. But eventually I got the photos I needed. And I started training my system. So the way it works is the cognitive services have a whole bunch of sections to them. So there's vision, speech, language, knowledge, and search. The part we, we are using is the vision part. And the vision one is also separated into different things. So you can do things like identifying text in an image as well, or using Azure. But the part we need to use is the face part. And two sections of that face part, the face detection and the face identification. What's really cool about it is if you're first starting out with this, you get a 30-day subscription key that you can use. And you don't need to even like register and have a Microsoft account or anything like that. So if you just want to try it out and see if it's going to work for what you need it to do, you can just go to this website and do the try for free on any of those. And you get 30 days for all of them. So you could do all of them. But first part was to do the setup and the training. And it's a RESTful service. So the first thing we need to do is create a person group. Now, this person group has an ID, which is case sensitive. That's important to remember as well, because otherwise you end up creating multiple person groups and you end up confusing yourself. So case sensitive person group ID. Once you've created that, you can create people in your person group. For that, you just give the person a name 
and they get some sort of good ID associated with it, with them. And that's how you use, them, uh, use that to identify them later. Once you've created the person, you associate photos with that person, or add faces, as they call it. And the add face works by you upload a photo, and you say, this is this person. Right? So it first runs the detect to find the face in the, in the image, and then you say, OK, this is this person. What's important here is that that method has to have photos where there's only one face in that photo. So there has to be only one person. It can't be other people. OK. Once you've added all of these faces and associated them with the people, you call a train method. This train method runs a whole, for not a very long time. I mean, for the four of us, it ran for about less than a minute with 10 photos each. So it's very quick. The only problem with the train method is it's asynchronous. So you can't really tell when it's done. So you have to keep calling the get training status method until it's done to see. So you create some sort of timeout to call the get training status every so often to see if it's done training. Once you've trained everything, we need to detect and identify. So firstly, fa face detect. So you upload an image, and it detects all of the faces in that image. It can be multiple faces in this case. And then you call identify on all of those faces. Now this is the part where I struggled a little bit, because I decided to do this in Angular. And RxJS is a great library, especially when you know very well how to use it, and you're using it to its full advantages. When you're using it just because you need to call a bunch of REST, uh, REST services, one after the other, it gets very confusing. There was a lot of merge mapping and fork joining and a lot of results that I didn't even, I didn't even care about the results. I just needed it to do something. <laughs> so that got a little bit confusing. But after a while, I figured it out. I'm not actually going to show you that code because it's not the best code I've ever written. <laughs> it's a very, very long method of merge maps. And the other thing that I had a little bit of trouble with here is that when you call the detect method, you need to send binary data. So you need to change your header to be, to re, uh, your request header to have an octet stream as a type. Whereas when you do the identify method, you're sending JSON data because you're just sending an array of faces. And then you have to change it back to be JSON. And I kept switching between them and I kept switching in the wrong places. So it took me a while to get that right as well. But I got it right eventually. So now it's demo time. I recently figured out that pre-recording my demos on a video make, makes my demo work when I do it for other people. <laughs> so having a backup plan makes it work. Well, recently, you mean last time, right? <laughs> no, the last time I did this talk. <laughs> OK, so I've, I've currently trained my neural network on Mike, Tony, and Rory, but not on me. So you can see there it says that my face is unknown. Right, so what we're going to do First thing we're going to do, let me just make sure that this is still running. OK, it is still running. Is we're going to get some training data. And just hit that button there. And trained. All right, so now if we go back to upload, and we upload that exact same picture that we had there just now, it should detect my face as well. And the way the Trello part works, and what I still haven't gotten it to do it automatically, so open a Trello in a new tab, but for now it just works where if you 
hover over the person, it gives you a Trello link at the bottom to that person. Okay, and you can see it still does all of the attributes, so the age, uh, gender, smiling, glasses, it still does all of that stuff uh, because that's what the face detect does. And there are other attributes. So those are the four attributes I chose to read out of the facial recognition. But there's other things like facial hair and emotion being displayed and a whole bunch of other stuff which you can play with, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to upload one more photo, one with Rory in it. So you can see that that works as well. And it's loading. There we go. So you can see, there we go, it has identified Rory as well. Now, one of the interesting things here, if you take a look at mine and Mike's faces are in orange, while Rory's and Tony's are in green, that is because it also gives you a confidence rating of percentage, how confident it is that that is that person. So well, what I've made it do just for, to make it a little bit prettier is if it's over 80%, it's green. If it's between 30 and 80, it's orange. And if it's below 30, it's red. I've never gotten a red on a training thing, on a trained face. So it's pretty good at it. And then you can also do it with other faces, even if there are unknown faces in the photo. So if you have a look at this photo here, there's a bunch of other people in the photo. And it's just marked them as unknowns because they're not in our training set. And to prove to you that I'm not just putting up pictures with blocks that I've drawn on. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture right now. And you can see that works too. So if you want to afterwards, I, I can take a photo of you and we can see how old Azure thinks you are, <laughs> if you're brave enough. All right. Back to the slides. Right, so what I achieved with this research is pretty much learning that no matter how complex something may seem, we as developers can do it. No matter how complex that calculation looked. I mean, I have no idea what that calculation said, right? It seems like magic but any sufficiently advanced technology does. So that's pretty much it. Thank you very much.